reading selections from Before We Remember We Dream. Binchang in 12 haikus. 1. Sandalwood City, the moon hangs high above us, night fragrant and calm. 2. So many temples here, monuments and kind people, but Buddha strolls by. 3. See the Talatsao, how the morning market grew, we trade first moments. 4. Quiet history, pristine Eden, paradise between civil wars. 5. Climb the Patrusai, honoring veterans here, an arch, a fine view. 6. Doctors and nurses, old Mahoset Hospital, health and sub IDs. 7. Matty and Chris film ghost movies and other stories, a sleepy whippet. 8. No giant monsters have been seen here in ages. Ah, how they slumber. 9. My family left years ago, but oh, memories seeking each other. 10. If you come visit, have a beer lao by the shore. Do you make on kop jai? 11. Circle tat luan, making merit, remembering those who came before. 12. When you depart home on the Vate Tarmac, wish and you might return. Narrative of Anox Heirs. Never read my life as the diary of some sad refugee. My account is not intended as a routine narrative of adversity overcome, mere survival once again transcending a descent to white hot hell converted to the placid limbo of frogs. No, I miss this familiar strange here in a way you cannot fathom. Our hard ghosts remain vigilant, thin as an ink scratch on an old palm leaf, haunting with a tongue claimed incomprehensible. The old signposts have been lost, but in strangeness, possibility. I hope, moving, a shadow in uncertain passages, making melodies for newsless souls. In daring this, might I shape some limitless star? We, scrambling to replace what we barely knew, barely recognize our tangled metamorphosis, our hymns of recovery, organs of uncertain purpose, in the body cosmic, mistaken easily for endings, not new beginnings. Oriental rat flea, you've known pyramids and paupers, vermin and saints, filling graveyards between your leaps with your mouth of plagues for every age and eon. Who brought you so far to Olympus, now made immortal in your impossible, improbable diaspora? but still a moat in our boundless cosmos. Among these mighty pens and laurels, these songs of fading gods and apocalypse, what do you know of Vinchan or Versailles, Vincent Chin, Mekong Deltas, or fabled Delphi? Yet a single bite can rouse legendary lions whose roars might move a thousand stars the way mere butterflies level vast empires. For all of this, I gaze with you at the distant peaks of Mount Maru, a cosmic ocean a lifetime away, scratching with a sigh an unspeakable memory. Phnom Penh in January. In the old country, my friend is amazed at the tiny silver boxes arrayed in the market square, ornate rows, tight-lipped and cryptic. They look like coffins for inchworms, she jests. I tell her they're for beetle nuts, great for intestinal worms, or so the spitting elders tell us, petting their bellies of hollow. We want to grab some vermicelli, passing what looked like a freshly quartered manta in a bamboo basket on the way, his pale lips mouthing dark pronouncements on us all, his tail flicking on a squalid table, waving goodbye at the many tourists in these markets of carcass. Every bite becomes a postcard, colorful as saffron monks smoking in the street. On the road to Vinchan, 1975. Bad enough the secret city fell in a secret war with human faces, a road of refugees making their run for it. Some strange hopes prevailed, frantic, 
littering for way with filth and stragglers, discarding a thousand things they'd been so certain they'd need. There was a major I knew escorting them, sent to keep something close to order at the end. By the roadside he recognized two men. He'd grown up with them, attended one's wedding. In their despair, with old knives, they'd slit each other's bellies open, trying to get a taste of opium in the other's warm fat. The air reeked of bowels and defeat. He left them behind that day to die, as such men die in Belarusian dust. But thirty years later in Minnesota, he still remembers their eyes when they offered to cut him open, too. Riding the Tiger Burying my wars, these memories of you, it don't mean nothing, wondering who will stop the rain, and who knows the way back to San Jose, ten thousand places you left your hearts. What a song for all these waters and slaughters. It seems almost unthinkable, but I'll ask anyway. In the shadows of Saigon, in your olive and pomp, did you really see yourselves in your rumbling array as some smiling lady rider from Niger, or believe you were merely the tiger? All of this napalm, the burning bright, our fearful symmetries, those roaring hogs, hurling yourselves at the moon and stars, striped liberty, gorging with impunity, weapons free. You came a long way, babies, for hearts and minds, lighting huts like there's a snazzy metal down the avenue. You never pause to think what it really means to come back, deep down inside, from this land of cyclos and samsara, snickering at where tiger rumors, Shining bullets for a voracious phoenix. Deja vu. Ken Burns is bringing up the Vietnam War. It's a documentary with a soundtrack to die for. Nine Inch Nails and Yo-Yo Ma, Ray Charles and CCR. Eighteen hours to cover a war of twenty years and a hundred and eighty days. Or nineteen years, depending on who you ask, picking up shortly after the end of a French at Yin Bien Phu. For the occasion, I filmed a poem of mine this summer that someone found again, one I wrote in 2002 as I remembered a visit in November 1997 in Missoula among Hmong veterans while searching for my family. It's a long story. A poem doesn't give you much time to talk about secret wars or Valkyries, specters or the secret stories behind the code names of company men like Hog and Kayak, Black Lion or Mr. Clean. I hold old photographs in my hand. I click through digital faces, salvaged from old legionnaire estate sales, dying photographers who thought I might like to know what they saw in my lost jungles, for a price. It's the closest I get to a time machine, with no way to change the present, but possibly still the future. I've said this to you before. In writing this, time stops being a one-way river, less a bamboo sticks. 1,080 minutes is all the time they think we can spare. Forty years later, on a war that never ended for many of us, our voices, fleeting smoke, they try to box into a neat package, believe the bygone era will never relive again, Buddhist ideas aside. Missoula, 1976. At three years old in Montana, I became a citizen on Flag Day during the American Bicentennial. That and a cup of coffee gets you a cup of coffee even if you write a thousand poems for a million elephants. I didn't stay there, of course, but in this city I met my first ghosts and dinosaurs, gorgons and ancient gods. I played with a young girl named Dulcinea, discovered the family pigs eaten by a bear, and saw my first neighbor die, crushed beneath a fallen telephone pole. I wish I remembered his name. Our family dog Dutch, in his tragic jealousy, tried to kill me a few times. I still have one scar from it after 40 years. But I miss him anyway, because that's the way refugee memory works. Moving mountains, burning stars. In Germany, the Krupps Bagger 288 was forged to kill mountains, towering 96 meters and 13,500 tons, indifferent to poetic subtlety. This isn't the work of surgeons, cut into a mountain's coal heart may be an ancient vein of diamonds worthy of mortal beauties. Watch it cross a road, and you might feel more minute than an old man gazing at the summer mountains of Kudin. Witness it raise some sprawling range, dare you feel like a deity, 
some pure Vulcan at his fire who needs no scenery of mere stones. There are tiny men from Sydney and Beijing who smile to eagerly bring such tools to the peaks of antique Luan Praban, our groves of teak, our sacred caverns and aisles. In a small room in the cosmos, these fleas haggle. One day, they might reach Mars or Alpha Centauri, long after our own foolish names are rightfully lost amid flickering stars and cold galactic memory. Anchorage, 1979. What stuck with me after 38 years likely ought to be regarded as refugee trivia, minutia from a fraction of life fragmented. Anchorage flows back into my memory for reasons nebulous as Wendigo howls beneath the aurora borealis. I still dream of Mount McKinley among the clouds, that moose, some fierce Kodiak that towered above me in a mall trophy case I now see was no bigger than my father, roaring for eternity, collecting dust. There was a neighbor who smoked salmon I still remember as if it was yesterday. That never makes it to the stores. No words can convey how much you are missing out, even as I can never taste it again, either. One reconciles with that. I probably shouldn't spare a word for that cute little red-haired girl who bit me on the knee in the doctor's office, a pack of young women who taught me the nuances of Alaskan racism over a pair of new white shoes, walking home, alone, in the deep snow, because classmates told me the bus left without me when it hadn't. But now, I'm not sure how you spell Pong's name anymore, let alone where her journey took her after our secret tropical wars. But no one in particular. Please forgive me, but if I write a poem about you, we won't end up together. That's just the truth of it, after three decades. It's as good a deal as you get with a poet from Vinchan. For my parting gift, please know, I'm returning now to my 10,000 verses of a Laupacalypse and all of its unspeakable calamities. Chu. Here my mouth is an ink waterfall by the shore of your beautiful body of legends. One day, a hero like Sitong, Sinsai, or a wandering wit like Xinmian might come upon my modest verses and fondly remember bustling Market Street with the same delight as story to Nong Fan Yum, even if my own momentary name is forgotten, like the architect of your first thought or the last cook for the Buddha. <laughs>